gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes. And churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today around Kansas starts at the Celebrity Pancake Feed, the annual fundraiser for the Combat Air Museum, where newly painted nose art honoring the Patriot Guard was unveiled. Then we take a look at the Banner Creek Science Center and Observatory in Holton. Next, enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with the history of Fort Scott National Cemetery. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, it's early Wednesday morning, at least on TV. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. <laughs> and this is Around Kansas. And you can watch us online, too. So what time it is then? I don't it doesn't matter. It it's doesn't matter. Five so. o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A.M. or P.M. <laughs> That's, That's right. true. Good grief, we're getting close to the end of May already. Can you believe it? Memorial Weekend coming up. It's <laughs> like... You know, I just celebrated New Year's. I mean, what? <laughs> where has the time gone? I know. It seems like it. Good grief. It's been crazy. <laughs> crazy, yeah. So, <laughs> here we go. We, we were messing around with that song and thought we might turn today's show into a music video, but then thought better Since of it. Since I can't sing, and <laughs> I... <laughs> We threw so, that one out the window, but... So, anyway, we won't do any of those songs. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, I got to tell you, Frank, when uh -huh. we were at the Kansas Sampler Festival, uh -huh. I forgot to mention this last week, the uh, folks, I think Saturday was a record day at the festival, over 6,000 people. Wow. Um, and they all wanted to know where you were, Frank. So <laughs> well, every single one of them came by the booth and said, where's Frank? Well, I was entertaining a whole lot of family from Texas and Pennsylvania for a graduation party. So well, you're excused. Sorry. But we had a lot of folks that came by the booth that watched the show, and that was a lot of fun. And wow. so, yeah, so they ask about you. And we appreciate everyone's watching and everybody coming by the booth to say hello. And then there are people that you meet online. You know, we have a great Facebook page, and Carla Hall helps us keep that updated. Shout out to Carla. And I um, um, peruse some of the sites on Facebook looking for photographs to post up at the top. Mm -hmm. Man, there are some talented people. So I kind of met them online, and they came by the booth to say hello. So we got to meet in person, and that was really nice. Uh, Trent, Trent Burke was one of them, a very talented young man. And Larry, and I'm, I'm so sorry, Larry, I can't think of your last name. Is it Pacey or Pavey? He does, oh, my goodness, beautiful photographs. Hmm. And so it was really nice to meet you guys in person. Larry and his wife, it was really nice. So um, Sampler went off great. Of course, next year's coming up. Um, the last one. I know that's too bad. But it is too bad. Hey, Marcy's done a tremendous, tremendous uh, job. job. Yeah, and really has promoted Kansas. So one lady came by the booth and was visiting her son, um, who lives in Kansas. She lives in Florida. She said, "I am blown away by the things this state has to offer. I'm thinking of moving here." Wow. And I'm like, "There you go. There you go." Huh. So Marcy does a great job, obviously, with the festival, Wendy, everybody. I have to give a shout out to the folks in Winfield itself. Um, Dr. Jake and I got there hauling a stagecoach from Oakley. So we had to deal with the cops and everybody that, you know, all the local people um, getting that thing in after hours and just all kinds of stuff. They were amazing. Mm -hmm. And keeping the park clean and picking up and making everybody welcome. That park is beautiful. It's an island. So it's got just this beautiful little stream around it. And the folks in Winfield really went all out and did a great job. Wow. So yeah, it was really nice. Really nice. Look forward to next year. Make sure you come. We'll be back. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. 
Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Support Kansas agriculture education with an Agritag. Agritags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. I think Blueville does a great job of being educational in nature. They answer people's questions. They do it willingly. So we, we really appreciate that up close and personal approach that they have and how well they listen to their customers and respond to their needs. And they're very prompt uh, with things that we need uh, to have done. And so we, we're very pleased with the service. It's kind of a one-stop shop for all of your gardening and landscape needs. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. And we're back again. So Celebrity Pancake Feed at the Combat Air Museum. Uh -huh. I got to flip pancakes next to Vice Commander Chris Turner, a great guy from the 190th. And it was just a fantastic time. I love the Combat Air Museum. Love seeing all the veterans come through. It's just wonderful. And I, I just love spending time with all those great folks. So that's their big fundraiser every year. So go out and support that. But afterwards, there was a big salute to um, not only the 190th Air Refueling Wing that goes all over the world, folks. They aren't just sitting here in our backyard, you know, with the planes parked. They do stuff all over the world, but also to the Patriot Guard. And you know, <clears throat> after the Iraq War, when they all returned home, and they flew in formation into Forbes Field. I, I mean, I still see that today in my mind and get chills. They're an amazing group. Yeah. And this is an amazing story. The celebrity pancake feed at the Combat Air Museum had folks waiting in line a long time to help support the mission of this incredible museum. But this year, there was even more to look forward to. Once everyone was fed, folks moved outside and congregated next to the KC-135 Stratotaker flown by the 190th Air Refueling Wing of the Kansas Air National Guard. Brown paper covered part of the nose and lots of folks on motorcycles lined up alongside. The brown paper covered the newly painted nose art honoring the Patriot Guard, the motorcycle riders who were organized to form a shield between families and protesters at military funerals and later expanded to include fallen police officers as well. Vietnam veteran Terry Houck, who founded the Patriot Guard with his wife Carol, told the crowd that he had been angered by the protest at funerals, but the sign that read, Thank God for Dead Soldiers, was too much. No family, in the midst of laying their loved one to rest, should be subjected to that spectacle, he thought, and others agreed, and the Patriot Guard was born. From their website, the Patriot Guard Riders is a diverse amalgamation of riders from across the nation. We have one thing in common besides motorcycles. We have an unwavering respect for those who risk their very lives for America's freedom and security, including fallen military heroes, first responders, and honorably discharged veterans. If you share this respect, please join us. We don't care what you ride or if you ride, what your political views are, or whether you're a hawk or a dove. It is not a requirement that you be a veteran. It doesn't matter where you're from or what your income is. You don't even have to ride. The only prerequisite is respect. Our main mission is to attend the funeral services of fallen American heroes as invited guests of the family. Colonel Jared France, wing commander, told the assembly the art walk honors those who rose up to serve something greater than themselves and to fight for those who fought for them. The artwork was primarily the work of 190th senior airman Skylar Caldwell, who talked about iconic nose art images familiar to most of us, the Flying Tigers or the Memphis Bell. The words Patriot Guard were emblazoned over the images of figures standing with American flags and the phrase, Standing Guard for Our Fallen Heroes. It was cool in the 50s with threatening heavy skies. I counted many friends among those gathered. I counted it an honor to flip pancakes beside the 190th Vice Commander, Colonel Chris Turner. Colonel France and Chief Master Sergeant Von Burns were at the other end of the line serving sausage. 
These guys make me so proud that they represent Kansas to the world. We could not ask for better. God bless the Patriot Guard and their selfless volunteer mission, and kudos for being honored on the nose of a plane that does good work around the globe. LeCompton, the name was splashed across newspapers throughout America and Europe. It was debated in the halls of Congress. LeCompton interprets its unique territorial history with two museums and other sites. Events throughout the year celebrate history and community. The 160th anniversary of the Battle of Fort Titus, June 18th, 2 p.m., reenactors welcome. Call 785-887-6148 for more information. Spend the day in historic LeCompton, shopping, eating, savoring the rich history. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the Plains. We would like to join your management team. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. And we're back again. I'm sorry, but you know when you get a song in your head and you just can't get rid crazy. of it? Crazy. <laughs> Today it's crazy. Crazy. The word of the day is crazy, children. <laughs> and we're, we're, we apologize for we're that. Nuts. That's it. Bottom oh, line. My. Okay, yeah. so when I found out you were going to do the story, Frank, uh -huh. on the Banner Creek Observatory mm -hmm. Science Center, my friend Brenda Culbertson works up there. And she messaged me that they've got a couple of workshops coming up in July. Um, one on archaeology with our good friend Virginia Wolfcool, and geology with Linda Pickett, and in August two more chemistry and physics, which honestly doesn't turn me on. But in August they will have a meteor shower viewing. And my friend Brenda is just amazing. Um, she does some incredible stuff. A wonderful astronomer, but so creative and does some amazing things. So I think you can check out the website and. Great story, Frank. People are going to be blown away. Did you say Virginia Woolf? Wolf Cool. Oh, okay. Because who's afraid cool. of Virginia Woolf? And Nobody's afraid of Virginia Woolf Cool. She's wonderful. <laughs> okay, She's Banner a Creek. Sweet lady. It's an observatory. Listen to this. Banner Creek Science Center and Observatory was previously known as the Elk Creek Observatory, ECO. The ECO was founded in 2000 and became the only high school owned observatory in the world. It was originally built with grant funds from the Krista McAuliffe Grant Foundation, named after teacher Krista McAuliffe, who died in the 1986 Challenger shuttle disaster. The grant request was written by Karen and Mike Ford. The original grant funded a 14-inch telescope, robotic mount, fiberglass dome, and a CCD camera. USD-336 also assisted with the funding for the building, which was designed and built by Bob Phillips' woodworking class. The observatory construction was completed in late October 2000 and dedicated by Dr. Bruce Twarug, KU astronomy professor, in November 2000. Students learned how to do CCD imaging and how to use the images for research. In the summer of 2003, students got a larger telescope. In May 2003, Mike Ford presented a program to the Holton High School alumni about the observatory. After the presentation, several alums expressed interest in the project. Alumnus Bill Zerger had asked what would be the ultimate to work with and how much would it cost. A list of equipment was put together with the cost around $150,000. Bill and fellow alumnus Dennis Blossom talked to another alum, Senator Pat Roberts, about getting this funded for the school district. In December 2003, Senator Roberts called and talked to Coach Brooks Barta to congratulate him on winning the state 4A football championship and told him to pass the word that he had put in an appropriation for the observatory in the 2003 budget. When Congress approved the budget, the newly equipped observatory was a reality. The appropriated funds would be provided through the Department of Education's Technology Initiative Program. 
As of November 2004, a new dome was installed, a new robotic mount, new Dell computers, software, and a new large format camera from Santa Barbara Instruments Group, and a new portable 30-foot diameter Starlab planetarium. The telescope itself is an RCE Optical Systems 20-inch reflector, which had been used at Kitt Peak National Observatory in Arizona. With the kind assistance of Gary Hugg of the Northeast Kansas Amateur Astronomers League and Holton High School Advanced Space Science students, the observatory was up and running in late December 2004. A rededication was held in March 2005. Visit their website to arrange visits and take advantage of their observation nights. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses and rodeos, and my shoulders took such a beating, and that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery, and so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95 percent of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results with stem cell injections, but at about three to three and a half months, I started to, to feel better. I started to have less pain and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months, and I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights, I can throw, I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. Soil is the life of a farm. And for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Today, the American Angus Association is the largest breed association in the United States, and people may not know that that breed originated in the British Isles, but then was brought all the way to Kansas. This poem is entitled, Birth of a Breed. It was on the 17th of May, way back in 1873, that Kansas welcomed in some cattle that would change beef history. Near the town of Victoria, out on the Kansas Plains, a man named George Grant wanted to boost his cattle gains. To improve the native bloodlines and reduce the needed coals, on that day, George Grant brought in four Aberdeen Angus bulls. Can you imagine the sight when those beefy cattle arrived where nothing but shorthorns or rangy longhorns had survived? It must have been a funny scene that the neighbors thought contrary when those black hided cattle arrived out on the Kansas prairie. But when those calves were born, then the farmer's opinion moved because the influence of those bulls made the cattle much improved. The Angus breed developed and grew for all to see. The Angus Breed Association was formed in 1883. The American Angus Auxiliary was formed in 1952, supporting youth, showing, and scholarship and all the good they do. So like when George Grant brought those bulls here in that way, Angus bulls still bring improvement in cattle herds today. And since the hungry people of the world have protein as a need, we're thankful for this immigration of the Angus breed. Happy trails. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. A high-energy, drought-tolerant crop, sorghum only requires six inches of water to produce the first bushel. And with its wide uses and easy adaptation, sorghum proves to be a truly indispensable crop. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. 
Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back, folks. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a great um, experience for me sharing all the national cemeteries with you this month that are in Kansas and obviously some uh, beautiful places and uh, very appropriate to visit sometime this month or any time. Well, Memorial Day is coming up too, Memorial so it'll Day be a great time. Up. Yeah. Be a great time. Most of the cemeteries will be decorated and a lot of them will have people there to answer questions or to help you find folks. Um, Wakini is a state veteran cemetery. Um, and that's really neat. In fact, Dr. Jake and his cavalry crew will be doing a the color guard there for their ceremonies. So even though the national cemeteries are really wonderful, most of the cemeteries will have some kind of um, veterans service. You know, they have um, the local VFW, American Legion, or somebody comes out and does something. So find out what's going on in your neighborhood and, and go out and support those because these guys work awfully hard that weekend to get around to, to do all those services. So she's going to talk to you about Fort Scott. Fort Scott National Cemetery is located on the eastern outskirts of the city of Fort Scott. Fort Scott's located midway between Fort Leavenworth, Kansas and Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, on the route historically known as the Military Road. Fort Scott was established in 1842 and named for Lieutenant General Winfield Scott, then General-in-Chief of the U.S. Army. The fort's primary purpose was to maintain a three-way peace among Native American tribes forcibly relocated from Florida and the East, local tribes, and incoming white settlers. Troops guarded caravans on the Santa Fe Trail and patrolled the vast frontier territory. During the 1840s, the Army established a cemetery on the west side of town to accommodate the burial of soldiers who died while stationed at the Fort Scott Garrison. In 1861, town officers and citizens of Fort Scott purchased approximately four acres southeast of the Old Post for use as a community burying ground. Since the cemetery was controlled by the Presbyterian Church, it was known as the Presbyterian Graveyard. After the start of the Civil War, the new cemetery was used for the internment of soldiers stationed at Fort Scott. When Congress approved the creation of national cemeteries in 1862, the cemetery became one of 14 national cemeteries to be designated or established as such that year. On November 15, 1862, the Presbyterian Graveyard and an adjoining track owned by the town company were designated as Fort Scott National Cemetery. After the war's end in 1865, the remains of those buried in the old military cemetery as well as other soldiers buried in the vicinity in Missouri and Kansas were reinterred at Fort Scott National Cemetery. Following the close of the Indian Wars and resettlement of Native Americans, the Army closed or consolidated many of its small military outposts in the West. As a result, between 1885 and 1907, the federal government vacated numerous military post cemeteries, such as Fort Lincoln, Kansas, and reinterred the remains at Fort Scott National Cemetery. Eugene Fitch Ware, a noted Kansas poet, is buried in Grave One, in the heart-shaped section of the cemetery. Ware was a Connecticut native who moved to Fort Scott at the age of 26 in 1867 and spent the remainder of his life in Kansas. Ware served in the 7th Iowa Cavalry during the Civil War and was based at Fort Scott. After the war, he entered the bar and practiced law at Fort Scott and became active in Kansas politics. Ware achieved fame as a poet, writing under the pseudonym Iron Quill. He was a prolific poet, and some of his most famous works include The Washerwoman's Song and John Brown. A large native sandstone boulder marks Ware's grave. The natural beauty of this boulder impressed Ware, and one of his final requests was that it be used as his grave marker. Also interred at Fort Scott National Cemetery are the remains of 16 Native American soldiers, all privates in the Indian regiments of the Union Army who served as invaluable scouts. Fort Scott National Cemetery was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1999. Goodbye to May. Crazy. Crazy. It's been crazy. <laughs> I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas.
Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part.